Hello everyone, how is everybody doing on this fine day? At least I hope it's a fine day for all of you. It is definitely a fine day for me because I am at one of my favorite places in the entire world. That's of course the iconic Spaceship Earth. I am back at Epcot, guys, and what, to do another Guardians review? No, no, what have I told you? I'm actually doing a pretty significant video all about World Showcase, one of the few areas of any Disney park that doesn't have any roller coasters. You're a roller coaster channel, Brian. What are you doing at World Showcase? Well, what if I told you, hypothetically, of course, that I was about to make World Showcase one of the best roller coaster destinations in the world by adding a roller coaster to each of the 11 countries, with the catch being that it has to be a roller coaster that actually exists in each of those countries. This is gonna be a lot of fun, guys. I'm actually gonna make this into a little bit of a challenge. It would be very easy for me to just pick the best roller coaster in every country and plop it into World Showcase. No, 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 like any good park, it has to be a well-balanced lineup. So I've actually set some rules for myself and they are as follows. This park needs to have one roller coaster from B&M, one from Intamin, one from Rocky Mountain Construction or RMC as you might know it better, and then one additional roller coaster from B&M, Intamin, or RMC. You gotta have some wooden coasters, so there's gonna be a wooden coaster from any manufacturer, no restrictions there. And a really good park, let's be fair, would have two wooden coasters. Again, not setting any manufacturer restrictions for myself here. Even if it's an Intamin or an RMC, as long as it's considered purely wooden, it would not go against the previous four steel coasters from those manufacturers. We're also going to have an additional steel coaster outside of B&M, Intamin, and RMC. So this is where Arrow, Gerslauer, Premier, s and anything that's not the above three steel manufacturers, we're going to include a coaster here. And let's add one more steel coaster from, again, outside of B&M, Intamin, and RMC. A well-balanced park needs some family coasters, and my completely arbitrary definition of a family coaster, at least for this park, is it has to be under 100 feet tall, under 60 mile per hour speeds, and cannot contain any inversions. That would qualify it as a family coaster for this park. And this is still Disney World, this is still Epcot, so there's going to be a lot of kids here. We're going to add a second family coaster to World Showcase. And finally, we're going to have one wild card, no restrictions whatsoever. This could be any manufacturer. It could be a third wooden coaster. It could be a third family coaster. This is just a safeguard to pick anything that I want. I would love for you guys to do the same as I go around the world and build your own parks and obviously put those in the comments once you're done. This isn't really a serious video. This is all just for fun. So join me as I quite literally walk around World Showcase, travel the world, and talk about the roller coasters of each of the 11 countries here at World Showcase. There's a big debate among people in the Disney World community about where do you start in World Showcase? Do you go left to Mexico? Do you go right to Canada? Well, Coaster 365 lore, you might know that Coaster 365, at least the YouTube channel, quite literally started in Canada. So guess where we're gonna start, guys? Let's head north of the border. Walking through the beautiful Canadian pavilion, of course, dominated by their landmark, which is the Chateau Frontenac from Quebec City. Here's a quick plug for Quebec City, one of the most underrated cities in all of North America. If you want a taste of Europe without actually going to Europe, go to Quebec City. The restaurants, the sightseeing, the shopping, absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous city dominated by this hotel. You also got these totem poles, which is of course an ode to native Canadians, First Nations. There's also, I think, a slight ode to the totem poles that are located at Stanley Park in Vancouver. And once again, Vancouver uh, may be the prettiest North American city that I have ever been to. We're gonna try to get a nice backdrop for all 11 of these segments. But yes, of course, I am in Canada where the channel all started at Laurent. Should I pick a roller coaster from Laurent? Goliath's pretty good, Vampire, no, 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 we're not doing Laurent. The obvious choice is probably to pick a coaster from Canada's Wonderland, right? Go back, watch all the reviews I did. I think I did like 14 of them. Absolutely insane roller coaster park. Leviathan, their B&M Giga Coaster is probably the star of the show. Not only there, 
but in all of Canada. So before I pick Leviathan and burn one of my B&Ms, let's at least go through some of the other parks in Canada. If you remember Marineland, Dragon Mountain, one of my favorite arrows of all time. Such a quirky, weird, and insanely long ride that I love. I might take Dragon Mountain. Hold on, let's see. There's also a coaster that I have not done in Vancouver, just called Coaster at Playland. It's supposed to be like the Canadian Phoenix. Buzz bars, insane airtime, some say even better than Phoenix. I might take that for the wooden coaster. I do think I have to take Leviathan. Let's get a Giga Coaster to World Showcase, 306 feet tall. It is an absolutely beautifully looking ride and it's beautifully ridden as well. So we're gonna go with Leviathan to be the roller coaster for the Canadian Pavilion. La Ronde, there's not really too many parks in Canada after Canada's Wonderland. They got La Ronde, you got Playland in Vancouver. I think there's a small park in Alberta. The Edmonton Mall with Mindbender, that was a choice, but rest in peace, Mindbender. That's not happening anymore. Marineland, and I'm sure there's some smaller parks that um, I don't know of or have forgotten. But anyway, Leviathan, the Canadian entry. B&M, off the board. Uh, that could put me in a bad place later on. We shall see. Next up is the United Kingdom. One of my favorite fun facts about this pavilion is that this little road right here actually takes you on a tour through the centuries of English architecture, obviously starting with very long ago and going to towards more modern times. Very, very cool little touch for the UK. For those that may not know, I am of course from New England and we are pretty snobby about our seafood, especially our fish and chips. But I must say, even being snobby about fish and chips, Rosen Crown has one of the best fish and chips that I've ever had in my life. So let's talk some United Kingdom coasters. I would say definitely a, a bucket list country for any roller coaster enthusiast. Alton Towers, I think, being their crown jewel. You also got Blackpool Pleasure Beach. You got Thorpe Park, which is adding a very, very good looking roller coaster coming this summer with Hyperia. But there's a, lot, there's a lot of little parks too. I mean, Flamingo Land has like 10 roller coasters. You got like Paltons Park, you got Drayton Manor. There's a bunch of parks in the UK. So where do I go? for my roller coaster at World Showcase. So I could go big one. Well, that looked good, a hyper, an arrow hyper, right next to a B&M Giga. Probably not, and I have not heard great things about big one. I don't know if I'm going with anything in Blackpool. So let's maybe go to Thorpe. You got maybe the fastest accelerating coaster in the world now in Stealth. I can't go Hyperia yet because it's not open at the time of this recording. I think I have to go to Alton Towers. They got the Smiler, the world's most inversions on any roller coaster. That's a Gerstlauer. 14 inversions on that thing. Holy crap. I'm actually a little scared to ride that thing because I don't do well with a lot of inversions. So seven is a lot for me, let alone double that. Um, but we also got Nemesis. Again, I can't add Nemesis Reborn yet because it's not open at the time of this recording. Plus, I already used the B&M with Leviathan. See, this is the strategy at work right here. I think I'm going the Smiler. You had the B&M Hyper, why not right next door throw an absolutely crazy inversion machine into World Showcase. I don't know if the Disney <laughs> the Disney crowd will like 14 inversions. Too bad, you'll definitely get some people riding it. So that will burn one of my other steel roller coasters. I do have that wild card as well. So, so far we got Leviathan, a B&M Giga, and the Smiler, an insane Gerstlauer Infinity Coaster. We are now crossing the English Channel and heading to the beautiful country of France. Of course, country I've been to. Not only have I been to it, I've recorded some roller coaster reviews from France. Parc Asterix, Disneyland Paris. We had a great time there. Of course, you gotta have the Eiffel Tower and the France Pavilion. That is a one-tenth scale of the actual Eiffel Tower in Paris, which if you haven't watched this channel, you might have known that is where I proposed to Megan. The real one, not, not the fake one. You may think Ratatouille is the go-to attraction here in the France Pavilion. No, 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 no. It's the patisserie. The best desserts in all of World Showcase. So let's talk some France all. Uh, ironically, I think I was wearing the same shirt in Disneyland Paris when I did those reviews. So kind of funny, I swear I didn't plan that. So France wasn't, I would say, a bucket list country for roller coaster enthusiasts until, until of course, a little ride called Tutatis came to park Asterisk, that park as a whole, 
It's one of the few European parks that I've been to, but most people that have been to a lot of European parks say that is one of the best parks in all of Europe, period. Two Tatis would be the obvious choice, right? Do I burn an Intamin in just the third country? There's also Disneyland Paris. Let's be fair, other than Big Thunder Mountain, not a lot of, <laughs> not a lot of good roller coasters uh, at Disneyland Paris. And there's a few smaller parks in France too. You got like Park St. Paul, you got uh, Wallaby Rome Alps, Walligator. I'm sure I'm missing a few other parks in there. I'm actually gonna surprise you with the coaster I'm gonna take. I'm going the family route. I gotta have two family coasters in this park. I am going back to Park Asterix for Pegasus Express, <laughs> another Gerstlauer, back-to-back Gerstlauers. That ride was so much fun. You got forward sections, you got backward sections. There's an awesome dark show section. Really, really well-themed and fun family coaster. Better than Fire Chaser Express at Dollywood, which is the ride most people compare it to. So I'm taking Pegasus Express, the first family coaster to go to World Showcase, representing France. Obviously, Azirus, also a very, very worthy honorable mention. So, three down, eight to go. Country number four is the Kingdom of Morocco. And this should be an interesting one to talk about from a roller coaster perspective because they, uh, at the time of this recording anyway, uh, they have nine roller coasters in all of Morocco. And, uh, <laughs> well, you know what? Let's discuss it. But this is honestly one of the more impressive, underrated pavilions. Really, really cool walkthrough area. Yes, definitely do not skip this pavilion on your World Showcase tour. Really, really impressive inside this one. So many places in Disney that you don't realize are really, really well themed. Morocco, for sure, being one of them. So let's talk some Moroccan roller coasters. As I said in that intro, there's only nine. Eight of them are absolute crap. They're either kitty coasters, um, and there's an SPF Visa, and there's a few Zyklon Galaxies. However, there is one decent looking ride. This is how you can tell I am strategizing live because I just, by default, have to take my third Gerstlauer in a row. Now, the Gerstlauer family coaster is separate. That doesn't count towards the steel quota. So I'm burning my second other steel on another Gerstlauer. It's a Euro fighter called Serpent. It's located in Casablanca. Gotta take it, I gotta take it. I can't just throw a crappy SBF Visa or a Zyklon Galaxy into this world-class park. So we unfortunately have to take one of those other steels with Serpent, the Gerstlauer Eurofighter in Morocco. So I'm already limiting myself. I do have that wild card, which I think I'm gonna absolutely need for another one of these other steels. SNS is out there, Premier, Arrow, uh, Mach. So that wild card is absolutely gonna come in handy going forward. It's time for some Japan. All right, all you want to talk bucket list roller coaster destinations. Japan is way, way, way high on all of our lists. Some of the most sought after roller coaster credits of all time are located in Japan. I'm talking about Ijinaika, Fuji Q Highland, Okugi, the RMC at Nagashima Spotland, Steel Dragon 2000, the Morgan Giga, one of the tallest roller coasters in the world, Flying Dinosaur Universal Studios. Of course, that doesn't even include Tokyo Disneyland and a bunch of other awesome, awesome looking roller coasters in Japan. I need to nail this one. I need to have a really, really good roller coaster from this incredible coaster country, incredible country in general. I would love, I would love, love to go here one day. If I take Ijinaika, that's my wild card. That means no more, it would have to be family, wood, and B&M, RMC, or Intamin going forward. Let's talk some RMC. Now there's only three countries in the World Showcase with an RMC. Japan, obviously the US and Mexico. And looking ahead, Mexico really only has two really good roller coasters, the other one being a Morgan. So I saved my wild card for that Morgan. I could also technically have two RMCs. I'm taking Hakuga, guys. I am taking one of the most beautiful looking roller coasters in the world. Maybe the prettiest looking RMC period. Hakuga is almost a hyper. I think it's like 180, 185 feet. Holy bucket list. Hakuge at Nagashima Spotland is coming to World Showcase for the Japanese Pavilion. We got our RMC, guys. We got 
our RMC. We're back home all, we're back home in the good old US of A, America. Of course, we got Independence Hall here representing America from the great city of Philadelphia, home to insanely historic landmarks and also historic, if not overall, disappointing sports teams. All right, time to talk some American roller coasters, which let's be honest, Coaster 365 in 2023 was one hell of a summary of the roller coasters of the United States. I pretty much covered all of them, guys. Other than Northern California and like Utah, Colorado, I pretty much cover them all. Let's be fair, it's the greatest country in the world. Four roller coasters, four roller coasters. I don't think there is a greatest country in the world overall, but for roller coasters, it is the United States, of course. I basically got the pick of the litter here, guys. I could pick anything. You go Endemann, B&M, RMC, Wood, Family. There is going to be an elite roller coaster for each manufacturer in the United States. But I thought about it. I could go Velocicoaster. Imagine, imagine taking Velocicoaster from Universal, putting it in Disney. Whoa. The debates that would rage on. Uh, no, I'm actually shockingly not doing Velocicoaster. I'm going to save Intamin for later on. No country does wooden roller coasters better than the United States. I think I have to go wood here. And what do I think is the best of the best in the wooden category? Not just in America, but probably the world. We are bringing the voyage to a world showcase. And why wouldn't I take the voyage? It's actually kind of themed to America, right? It's about the Mayflower's journey to the new world. We're bringing the voyage here, guys. Uh, we'll find room in the back somehow. We'll build the terrain. We'll make it the exact same ride that's at Holiday World. Uh, and you know what? Way more opportunity for night rides here at Disney than there is at Holiday World. So you don't have to go to Hollywood Nights. You can just come to Epcot and ride it at night every single day. The voyage. Coming to World Showcase. Next up, we got Italy. I am gonna try my best to not do a horrendous Italian accent and not be offensive. Of course, we got St. Mark's Square here from Venice. Absolutely a beautiful, beautifully looking pavilion. They got some coasters in Italy, not the best of the best and not the best of the best parks either, but they have a variety of options. So let's talk some Italian roller coasters. You know, for a country with a lot of roller coasters, I think they have well over a hundred different roller coasters in Italy and a variety of parks. I wouldn't say it's really like a top location for roller coaster enthusiasts to visit. Even in Europe, I'd say, you know, Germany, the UK, Spain, Poland, Sweden, Denmark, Belgium, Netherlands, all those countries I think you would probably go to before Italy. They're known basically for two major parks, Mirabilandia and Gardaland. Overall, really, really good collections there. You know, some B&M dives, some mock water coasters, some B&M inverts. The coaster that I am going, I am finally, finally going into the Intamin playbook and we're bringing a ride called iSpeed. I haven't been on it. I've only really seen a POV. From at least my perspective, it looks like if Storm Runner from Hershey and Maverick from Cedar Point had a baby. It's a launch coaster, zero to 62 miles per hour in just 2.2 seconds into a 180 foot top hat. It looks awesome. I think, at least from what I like in roller coasters, it would be my favorite roller coaster in all of Italy. So we need a launch coaster so far. I have not selected any launch coasters here at World Showcase for my collection. We're going some high speed, the first Intamin to make it to the park. It is Germany time. Kind of like Japan, it's one of these countries that I really need to pick a good, good, good roller coaster from. Who doesn't love watching the German trains go around their tracks? One of my favorite areas in World Showcase. Let's talk some German roller coasters, guys. I think if you were to pull at least American roller coaster enthusiasts, if you could pick one country to visit, and that's the only country you could visit other than the US for roller coasters, Germany just might be the number one answer for that. An absolutely wonderful, wonderful collection of coasters and parks. Probably my number one bucket list park in the world is Fantasia Land. That park looks unreal with some insane looking roller coasters. So maybe we'll go back to Fantasia Land for this pick. You got Europa Park, which is, you know, the Disney of Europe, not including Disneyland Paris. The theming there is supposed to be absolutely incredible. And then you got parks like Hansa Park with Karnan, you got Heidi Park, you got Holiday Park, Movie Park Germany. There's so many really, really good parks in Germany. Here's where I think I'm starting to back myself into a corner. 
I need to know a family coaster, guys. And the three countries left, I don't really know their family collection too well. I do know Germany does have some good family coasters, though. There's two in particular from Fantasia Land that I'm eyeing. I could go with Colorado Adventure, which is basically one of the best Vacoma mine trains in the world. It looks kind of like Big Thunder Mountain. But I'm actually kind of thinking this is, you know, still Disney World. Big Thunder Mountain still exists in the Magic Kingdom. So would I want to essentially put another Big Thunder Mountain in Disney World? I don't. So I'm going to pick, and this does fit my, you know, arbitrary definition of what a family coaster is. I'm taking Winches, which is a really, really cool looking spinning coaster. It's indoors. It duels. There's two of them technically. I'm taking Winches. I'm calling that a family ride, at least for this park. So... We're taking some winges here at the World Showcase. Starting to wrap it up, guys. Starting to wrap it up. Country number nine of 11. We in China all the country with by far, by far the most roller coasters in the world. A lot of them kind of look uh, like hot garbage, but there's still some really, really good looking roller coasters in China. Let's discuss. Random fun fact, the music video for Christina Aguilera's version of Reflection was shot right here. And that was really Christina Aguilera's like first ever song. So kind of a cool little fact. All right, guys. Trying to research the roller coasters of China. Overwhelming is an understatement. There are so many roller coasters and so many parks in China. We got a lot here in the US. At the time of recording, over 900 roller coasters. China has more than double that. There's over 1,800 roller coasters in China. That makes up almost 30% of all the roller coasters in the world. Like I said in the intro though, a lot of them, not great. A lot of kiddie coasters, a lot of garbage. There's still some really, really good roller coasters though. Some really good steel ones and some good Intamins. I, I, I'll be honest, offhand, not sure of the manufacturers. There's roller coasters called Soaring with Dragon, Coaster Through the Clouds, uh, Dueling Dragons. A bunch of SNS launch coasters that look phenomenal. But guys, I still need a wood coaster. I only have Voyage so far. So what if I told you I am going to quite literally take wood coaster? That's right. There is a awesome looking GCI at Night Valley, just flat out called wood coaster. Kind of like Voyage. It's another terrain coaster. It's almost a mile of track. It looks wild. It looks wild. If you Ask me what my top five bucket list coasters in the world are. Wood coasters on it. And it's coming to the China Pavilion here at Epcot. So Voyage and Wood Coaster. That's a pretty dang good one-two punch for wooden coasters here at the World Showcase. It's time for Norway all. And believe it or not, guys, I have actually been to Norway. Pre-enthusiast days. But uh, fun fact, I'm a huge Disney guy, as you know. Grew up in the 90s with all the Disney movies. And then the 2000s as I got older, and let's be fair, 2000s for Disney wasn't great in the animated department. A little movie called Frozen brought me back. I absolutely love Frozen. Loved it. Love, 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 love it. There's my girls right there. I don't know, so. Um, but fun fact, I watched a like making of Frozen documentary a year after the movie came out. It literally inspired me to go to Norway and see some of those incredible looking fjords and you know these stave churches. Can't recommend Norway enough. One of the most beautiful countries that I've ever been to and one of the most beautiful countries in the world, period. So the roller coasters of Norway, I'm kind of gonna run into the same situation that I did in Morocco in that there is not much. Not much in Norway, but better than Morocco because they do have one significant park called Tusenfried in Oslo. Actually, I've heard really, really good things about Tusenfried. They have an Intamin launch coaster called Speed Monster, which I've heard is very, very tame. Uh, they got a Vacoma wooden coaster, but do I want that one as my third wooden coaster? I don't. I'm actually gonna take and use my wild card. I still have that wild card. <laughs> and take another Gerslauer, my fourth in the park, but it's brand new for 2023. It's called Storm the Dragon Legend. It is a inverted Gerslauer launch coaster that goes back and forth Looks really, really good. There's another one coming to, ironically, Parque del Cafe in Colombia. Yeah, I've been there. Uh, but it looks really, really fun. Not too much. It's only like just over a thousand feet of track. I have no inverted coasters in my park so far. So let's get an inverted coaster in there. A new, another launch coaster to match I-Speed. 
I think it's going to be a good addition to World Showcase, a good addition to Tucson Freed. Norway is great, guys. You don't come to Norway for the roller coasters, you come for the scenery. And of course, last but certainly not least, we got in Mexico. As I kind of alluded to earlier in the video, Mexico, they have a, a few small parks here and there. They're really just known for one major theme park, and that's just flat out Six Flags Mexico. One of two Six Flags parks that I have yet to go to, the other one being Six Flags Discovery Kingdom, which might be happening later in the year. We shall see, but it's Six Flags Mexico. Honestly, it looks from all people that have been there, pretty underrated. And they have two really, really good roller coasters in Superman El Ultimo Escape, a Morgan hyper coaster, and an RMC called Medusa Steel Coaster. Now, unfortunately for me, I'm out of wild cards, I'm out of other steels. All I have left is an extra B&M, Intamin, or RMC. Where do you think I'm going, guys? Where do you think I'm going? I have to take by, just by luck of the draw, Medusa Steel Coaster is coming to a World Showcase. So two RMCs, listen, I'm an RMC fanboy, Having two RMCs in the same park, okay with me. And it's actually a good mix with a Kuge because a Kuge is a large scale RMC. Medusa is actually, I think, the smallest RMC in terms of height, but obviously still delivers those wonderful, wonderful airtime moments and inversions. So let's do a quick recap of my park. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed that little hypothetical trip around the world building the brand new world showcase at least in my eyes um, please feel free to do the same at home that's kind of the whole point of this video it's supposed to be a little bit of a challenge post your results down in the comments but using the same parameters that i did don't don't say oh i'm gonna have five intamins and then three rmcs and a bunch of bnms i personally think i built a pretty good park i'm gonna post a recap on the screen right now honestly looking back and i thought of this as i was you know walking along there is a trade and a swap that I would have made looking back. I would have added Wicker Man to the United Kingdom Pavilion as my family coaster. I could add a third wood if I wanted to, as long as it was family. That would have freed up an other category. And let's be fair, Smiler might be way too intense for the Epcot crowd. I would have used that other steel in Germany for fly. That I think would have been a more perfect park. But alas, I strategized as I went. It's the luck of the draw, guys. It happens. It's still a damn good park, but that would have been the one move I would have made looking back. I have been blessed to visit seven of these 11 countries in my life, three of them for the channel. This is gonna be a little bit of a tease because by the end of 2024, that three will become five. That's right, I'm gonna be visiting two of these countries in real life in 2024, but which two will it be? Well, you're gonna to have to stay tuned for later on in the year. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this kind of ridiculous and goofy video. I hope you enjoyed it. You can definitely expect more silly videos, more coaster reviews, more vlogs, more at-home recording videos. Got a whole bunch of ideas for 2024, so hope you are excited for those videos, and I will catch you next time.